Welcome to Psychos and Sociopaths. Today we're going to go uh, talk about Robert, what was the last name again? Mosley. Mosley? Mo- Mo- move, move the mic uh, in, like in front of you. In front of your mouth. No, in front of your mouth. Back there? Right there? Yeah. Uh, Robert Mosley, M-A-U, Mosley. Yeah, Mosley. Yeah, and for uh, our listeners, Johnny's not going to be on the... Uh, it, I think he said he's going to take him a uh, sabbatical for this. It's nothing against us. He's having some personal life issues, so and he's going to talk. He's going to come on a uh, nerd sports tomorrow. But by the time this rolls out, which is going to be next Saturday, because uh, we took the Christmas vacation off, I just pumped out a couple episodes for that week. I mean, Chris, Christmas time, I was just busy doing like 50,000 different things. Uh, but back to Robert. Uh, he was an English Shilia killer and killed four people with three of the killings taking place in prison. After receiving a life sentence for a murder, initial reports false statement, he ate part of the brain, which dubbed him the name Hannibal the Cannibal. Uh, and also the brain eater amongst other prisoners. How how many nicknames do a lot of is most of the inmates when they're in, in jail just that's where they get most of their nicknames at the time? No, they get a nickname from the street. Oh, that's reason why. Turn it around. Yeah, uh, the when it says tornado. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. See the bigger difference. I you know, you know. but. I mean, most of the street names get in prison or something like that, don't they? No, they get no. off the street. Their aliases come with them when they come to jail. Uh, but, but a lot of the uh, newspapers found out throughout the autopsies and everything that these uh, allegations were false. So, but he still got the name. It's one of those things. It's like uh, the uh, your name is Mud. The reason why your name is Mud. <laughs> You know that one? What was it again? Your name is Mud. Oh. You yeah. know you know the you know the story about that. Uh-uh, I don't. Uh, hold on. I'll go to the origin. Uh, this uh the saying "Your name is Mud" uh is referring to Dufflin Samuel Mud, who uh treated John Wilkes Booth after he was assassinated. In, uh, President Abraham Lincoln. Oh, okay. That's the reason why people, your name is Mud. It's synonymous with that. So he, he kind of looked at a fixed John Real Booth's leg. Yeah. Oh, okay. But after that, it, it's one of those, uh, what was a historical mark. <laughs> the only reason why I know this is because of National, Lampo- uh, National uh, Treasury with mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage. Yeah. It was on there. So oh, okay. It, it, I get freaking references from a lot of stuff in my life, and I research it, and that's where I get it all. But back to Robert. Uh, early life, he was uh, one of 12 children, so uh, apparently they were Catholic. They were. <laughs> uh, born in Spike, Liverpool, spent his early years in a Catholic, Catholic orange, uh, orphanage in uh, Crosby. Crosby. Crosby? Yeah. Uh, At the age of eight, uh, Robert's parents was relieved by, uh, uh, he was relieved by his parents. Retrieved. Well, retrieved by his, man, I am not here right now. Need to take your eyeballs out and clean them. Uh, Probably. Uh, (laughs) Retrieved by his parents and subject to a routine of physical abuse until he was eventually removed uh, from uh, their care by social services. Uh, later stated that he was raped as a co- uh, child, and uh, such early abuse had left deep psychological scars. Uh, this is another case where uh, the individual that started doing like horrible things was like abused as a child. I mean, I, I, w- I try to tell people it's like it's like a eighty-two percent chance if the abuse and everything like that, and the person turns to crime or gets you know. Uh, doesn't care anymore about the human 
life, so he starts killing. I mean, but I know, like, lots of people that have had, like, abusive parents and everything, and they just, they excel. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still have the emotional scars and everything, but, I mean, most of your Navy SEALs or Spec Ops or anything like that, they're damaged yeah. to the point to where they don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason why they excel in that kind of career field. <clears throat> But as a teenager during the uh, 1960s, Robert was a sex worker in London, using his income to support his drug addiction. He was forced to seek psychological help. Psychiatric help. Psychological and psychiatric. psychiatric is the same thing. Psychological and psychiatric help is the same thing. It if literally you, is. If you say so. It is. If you say so. It is. It's not what says psychiatric here, we're not psychological. Fuck you, Dad. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Help after several suicide attempts. Oh, he wasn't a winner. No. Uh, it was during his talk with doctors that he claimed that, that to hear voices uh, tell him to kill his parents, which. There probably weren't voices. It was just him. It's like, maybe you should kill those motherfuckers. Uh, he quoted as saying, if I had killed my parents in the 70s, none of these people would have died. Which is kind of the one of the uh, Mendez brothers you know, case. Because Paul, if he killed his kid back in, or his parent back in 1970, he'd be in jail and be out on the street to kill people. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> it really does make yeah. sense. It was like, wow, well, we got in a... Reported with those murders. Well, no, three of the murders were actually prisoners. He's only convicted of actual one legitimate uh, murder in oh, outside, okay. and that was a uh, uh, manslaughter. Yeah, the other counts were in prison. Mm. So, there's your theory, there, buddy. Well, I guess that you can fix stupid. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. uh, the murders. Uh, the one, uh, the first one was in 1974, uh, Robert, uh, Garrett did? Oh, choked him. You know, piano, piano wire around the neck thing. Yeah. Uh, John Farewell and Wood Green London, uh, Farrell picked up, uh, Robert for sex, showing him pictures of uh, children he had sexual uh, uh, abuse robert uh serena self -deplete. oh okay so man that's i kind of don't feel bad this guy now no after reading this is like it's one of those situations he's like okay you got this 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 and this and you start you start like diving more into because the whole reason this is most of the time when i get my serial killers it's just something that just pops up now i'm like okay uh, maybe he's not that bad of a guy. He kind of <laughs> provided a service to the public by killing some guy. Yeah. But I, the, I, I was reading... See, they didn't... The article I was reading, uh, reading in the... What is this? The DailyMail.com. Uh, it, it's just saying... It, it doesn't even give me any, any of the full details of the reason why he was he's in there. He's just, oh, he's a bad person and everything. He did this and this. Uh, but it just, it gives you a, a small amount. And it, it didn't even say the reason why he did kill him. Yeah. So. But anyways, back to the killers. Uh... He surrendered himself to the police, saying he's uh, he needed uh, psychiatric care. Uh, Robert was found unfit to stand trial, and instead was sent to uh, Broadmoor, Broadmoor, Broadmoor Hospital. In 1977, he was he and another resident, uh, David Cheeseman. Yeah, Cheeseman. Okay, I'm thinking. I was just, never heard that last name. Uh, locked him, uh, uh, locked themselves up in a cell with a third patient, David Francis, a convicted child molester. They tortured him to death over the period of nine hours. After the incident, Robert was confessed, uh, uh, convicted of manslaughter, uh, manslaughter, and then sent to Wakefield Prison. Man, he's just doing Lord's work right there. Yeah. 
Maybe he should have done eight hours instead of the nine hours. He might have got off on it. Probably. But you know, what you know what what probably uh, happened? He was doing the eight hours because nobody really wants to put in eight hours work anyway. Yeah. Maybe about six, but they probably figured out a newer uh, newer torture to do with him. Yeah. That's the reason why the nine hours. They did a little bit of overtime with that. Yeah, but like nine, nine hours over after the eight hours hour after the eight hours is overtime to get time and a half on him. Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> huh? I'd say that. <laughs> in 1978, Robert killed two fellow uh, prisoners in Wakefield Prison in one day. Uh, his first victim was Stanley Drawwood, uh, convicted of manslaughter of his wife. Oh, damn, again, not really upset. Uh, had uh, invited Darwell to his cell where he uh, garroted and stabbed him before hiding his butter underneath his bed. He then attempted to lure another prisoner into a cell, but uh, but all ref- uh, refused. Robert then prowled the uh, wing, hunting for his second vin- uh, victim, eventually cornering and stabbing prisoner Robert uh, Bill Roberts to death. He hacked at Robert's skull with a makeshift dagger and then multiple times stuck his head uh, against the uh, struck his head against the wall. Robert claimed uh, calmly walked into the wing's office, placed the dagger on the table, and told the officers that, uh, that the next roll count will be too short. Fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh fuck me running. Wow. Well, that, that's all on this uh, Wikipedia page. Uh, going to the Daily Mail, uh, but. Um, I, I, that's the only bad thing about having two de- separate uh, style of uh, laptops. I can't send. I can't like uh, airdrop it. Well, I'm on the news page on that Wikipedia. You talking about that? Uh... Dailymail.com. Yeah, yeah, I got it right here. Okay. Did you go to it? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm running right now. Okay. Uh, but they're saying one of the UK's most dangerous serial killers will die in a underground glass box after his last ditch uh, appeal to live alongside other prisoners was rejected. See, that's the thing. Okay, that's the thing about this whole thing. I was reading the Wikipedia uh, page and mm-hmm. getting all the information out there for this guy. And then you go back and you read the news article. Mm-hmm. And they're just basically, I was like, he was a piece of shit and everything like that. And, you know, hands down, what he did was wrong. Yeah, that's true. You know, you just go through the justice system and everything like that. But you look at it, you're like, but in all reality, every motherfucker would probably do that except those freaking idiots that just believe that, like, pedophilia or well, it's like a child jail. abuse is a life choice. It's like jail and prison to people that are in the United States if they're child molesters and stuff like that, they have them in a, a special pod so they're away from general population and general population would kill them. Yeah. Uh, we, we, our, ours was a... Uh, uh, where was our... Da, 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 I'm trying to think. Not one building. Two building? Is there a two or three? No, it was two building. Two building we have uh, was our... Uh, uh, child molesters? Uh, it was general... Population child molesters, mm. uh, uh, but they basically. I mean, they, they, there's this story that keeps on going around that I, uh, I constantly see, of a uh, guy was in a, a cell with a uh, uh, child molester, and he ended up killing the child molester in prison. Uh, I know the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was at the All Red unit, yeah. and. Luckily, I wasn't on shift when it happened because those two people got fired. Because what it, well, the whole story about it, uh, the whole story about this guy is he went to jail. Uh, originally, he went to jail for tickets. Yeah. And then he went to, uh, then he was in a cell with the child molester, and the guy was boasting how he raped these kids. So the guy killed him. That's why you got the uh, manslaughter charge mm-hmm. or the murder charge. Well, now he's in the all red unit. They, it's in his records what happened. Mm-hmm. And they, the, I don't know if it was the warden or whatever, fucked up, 
put them in the same cell as a uh, child molester. And guess what? The child molester just did the same thing. I boasted how he, like, uh, diddled kids. He was a chomo, blah, blah, blah. And then he ended up dying because the guy, like, pulled the uh, power cord and choked him out, kill him. And the uh, uh, reason why he got away, the uh, re- reason why he was able to do it was because of the basic fact is both the officers were sick, so they didn't do their regular rounds. Oh, okay. And uh, <clears throat> then about, uh, uh, not breakfast, yeah, it was breakfast. It wasn't dinner count. Dinner count was already done, but uh, during breakfast, the guy went to the sergeant's desk and was like, hey, I just now can tell you this, but my Sully's dad, I killed him. So they went down, checked it out, put him in the SAG uh, or 11 building for security reasons and everything. And he finally got the trial. And that's the reason why, I mean, he just killed serial killers. Yeah. So he just killed a, baby, a child molester. Yeah, Chomo. But that, I mean, you look at the article itself, and he's just. Uh, I mean, they mentioned a little bit who killed child monster, one wife killer, and was told that this week that he uh, would be in, incarcerated in a glass box until he dies. But he's actually uh, just like uh, Charles Bronson, not the actor, uh, the uh, uh, UK's most dangerous uh, criminal. Mm. Never uh, heard of him. There's a movie about him. It's called mm. Charles Bronson with uh, Tom Hardy. It's actually it's it's a weird uh, movie because it's yeah it, it's more or less kind of like clockwork. Uh, it, it's done like a clockwork orange type thing, which the movie another movie I did, couldn't finish. I never watched it. it, it went, I, everybody's like, "Oh, we're praising this because it's Stanley Kubrick." I was like, "Man, I could barely stand the stand." Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I don't like his movies. Yeah, I never watched that one either. The Stand. Mm-hmm. I watched bits and pieces of it. Mm-hmm. I, tried, I tried so hard. I just don't. It's one of those things. It's uh, people that are art, uh, artistic and they're saying or or critics. It's like, oh, this is, this is like Eyes Wide Shut. I couldn't yeah. even stand that movie. And that that movie had like a lot of sex scenes, and it'd be one mm-hmm. of those things. It's like maybe I should watch this, mm-hmm. and I couldn't. I just like. You know, and take that one movie like that took them a lot of years to make that son of a gun. Yeah. Well, I think it was already made, but they have, they were trying to get the uh, uh, rated R rating instead of the NC-17. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of movies that like that. It's like Showgirls was the first movie that ever had the NC-17 because it had so much nudity in it. I'm like, and then you watch it, and it's like, the only thing go- going for it is the nudity. The acting is shit. The storyline is shit. I mean, the whole thing yeah. is just shit. And the only thing going for it is TNA. I mean, it's yeah. it's literally. I mean, I know porn uh, pornos that had better freaking storylines. Yeah. I mean, even oh, I'm a I'm a plumber. I'm here to clean out your pipes. That's a better storyline than that freaking movie. Yeah. But shout out to Maria. She'll get that joke. <laughs> Oh, I, t- did, I told you about our uh, super fan, right? You finally got to meet our super fan. Yeah, you said something about it. Yeah. You mentioned something about it. Yeah. It was freaking... I had a good time. We watched... Uh, we tr- you know a Ma- uh, Mazda and Miata, right? The really, yeah, uh-huh. really small ones? Yeah. I mean, this guy filled up both freaking seats. Damn. When he, he <laughs> She drove by. Then she did a U-turn to go uh, check this out. She's like, I, I, I got to get some cash anyways. And literally the car was like, he got out. I never. I. I I've seen a co- uh, couple of times. I've seen a car bounce like that, but that, that was a good bounce. Yeah, I had one of those like that when I worked at a, a liquor store. There's a convenient. There's a convenience store across the street. I saw this car come in. I, I literally is it the right hand side of the car was dragging, and then when the person got out, it's a it's whoop like that, and I and I, I actually heard a. <laughs> And then when that person got back into the car, it went, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And where I work, we had a guy that, it's a, 
he had to have somebody help him in the shower because he couldn't fit into the shower and they made and he couldn't use the small soaps because he couldn't fit around so they made him a big bar of soap yeah and when the county that he was withholding for came and got him that daggum car was it leaned about a 45 degree angle and, and scraping the side going down the road yeah that's oh, a lot of prisoners like those make those big bars of soap yeah, they take the one, yeah little ones the, make big bar, but this is because he couldn't use a small bar. So no, and then some of them is because they're they're like big guys and everything. Yeah, this guy's about about four hundred pounds. Yeah, but uh, in nineteen eighty three, Robert was deemed too dangerous for a normal cell. Uh, prison authorities built a two cell unit in the basement of Wakefield Prison due to his his. Uh, history of violence when out uh, outside his cell he is escorted by at least four pr- uh, prison officers uh his cell will do this in uh, america uh style uh stuff uh 18 by 15 yeah or if you want to use the communist language uh 5.5 by 4 by 5 meters uh the two cells are uh, slightly larger than average and have uh, large bulletproof windows through which uh, he can be uh, observed. I, see, this is this, uh, this is almost the same thing as Charles Bronson, but he actually, what's strange about him, though, is uh, he ended up making uh, books, exercise books. Mm, really? Yeah. It, it, I mean, they're actually, uh, I ended up reading one, and it, it's good workout routine, and mm-hmm. like uh, small spaces and everything, which I'm reading. I need to redo. I need to do that. And uh, I wonder if they have a, uh, let's see here, prison style workout uh, books. They probably do. Oh, did you not? Uh, that was another. Uh, uh, Solitary Fitness by Charles Bronson. There we go. Yeah, they got a couple of them. Oh, uh, Dewey. Is it spelled the same way as regular Charles Bronson? Yeah. Uh, Charles uh, B R O N S O N. I'm looking up and I'm finding Charles, Bron- Charles Bronson movies. Uh, put in uh, solitary fitness. Well, that sounds like the movie that you're talking about, Charles Bronson. Oh, uh, look up Tim Hardy. Tim Hardy. Yeah, uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Charles Alter Sabador. I wonder if that was that the movie that was. I thought it was called Charles Bronson. It may not be because I, I look at looked it up. I see, I see the Infinity Chamber, Warrior, The Drop, Legend. Lawless, taboo, scenes of a sexual nature, lock, this means war. Oh, by the way, that means war is a, is a neat movie. And this means war? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the same one. I love that movie. That's actually that's a really one, good movie. Uh, well, it is, it's actually got a guy with our last name in the book in the movie. Yeah, I know. That's the whole reason why same you like thing. it so yeah, much. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Tom Hardy. There we go. If you go to I, uh, IMDB, that's where I'm going right now. I actually like how he got, uh, he fixed himself. You know, it's one of those things, I'm, the only thing he does now is like coffee. That's mm-hmm. his, his drug of choice now. It's Tom Hardy? Yeah. Taboo. You had the right guy. No, there's a bit more. Bronson. That's what the uh, movie's called. Oh, okay. 
Bronson. I mean, it was something like that. <clears throat> but no, it, that was another another guy who they had to make uh, special arrangements because uh, that guy, Charles Bronson, he actually uh, uh, caused a riot because he wanted better tea. Mm. He was he was so destructive. They had a. I mean, you, you can watch the movie. It's actually a pretty decent movie. It's just a weird type movie. I just watched. It was one of those movies that you watch because you're. It, it's the only reason why I watched it was because I was a correction officer at the time. And I, oh, okay, I like, yeah, okay. I finally found it. Yeah. But his workout, his workout with team, he he kept himself fit. It's actually. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. But uh, that's the end of this episode. Uh, by the way, and uh, uh, for Valentine's Day, we're going to get it all set up. Hopefully by two weeks into January, where we actually do the uh, uh, commercial for it. So we have a month to get everybody's uh, name and everything to uh, for the winter. We're going to do a murder basket. Uh, it's... it's <laughs> It's still going to be like, it's going to be like a, uh, it's not going to be weird, but it's going to have weird stuff in it. Because I found, <laughs> I found like a scope, uh, skull bath bombs mm -hmm. and uh, a knife with blood on it, bath bombs. I mean, they, they have a lot of bath bombs. I was thinking about doing the hoarder part because they have like Freddy Krueger's bath bombs and everything like that. I'm, I'm still diving in on all the stuff I'm going to put into it and everything like that. Maybe we can find some. Maybe we can find some more neat stuff to go in it or something. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, for Valentine, I know what movie I'm gonna put in. There. I don't know if I'm gonna do, but the only thing is, is I don't know what uh, if I'm gonna actually put the DVD because a lot of people don't do DVDs anymore. But so I married an axe murderer. Oh, okay. That because I, I was talking, uh, we were talking to a couple of our uh, uh, a couple of my friends, what movie to put in there. Like, oh, you got to put in, like, silence. I was like, no. That was too, nah. No, not that it, one. Yeah, well, uh, but check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, and just com. Uh, we're going to just do it to where you comment and share the page. It shows up. Uh, or we do it on Facebook. But I'm David Dickerman. And I'm Wesley Dickerman. And this is Psychos and Sociopaths. Thank you for watching, everybody.